Hello, 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 Max Voltage here. And today is a little bit different video. I'm gonna be installing ethernet to my solar inverter. So why am I doing that? The reason why I'm doing that is because I have a 3G modem that's being deprecated. Uh, basically AT&T, Sprint, Verizon are all shutting off their 3G networks at different times. AT&T's already done it. Sprint is doing it at the end of uh, March. Uh, which is actually the one that I, I have uh, with my inverter. So the options I had were to replace the modem and it would cost about $495 to have it done or a little over 300 if I had them send it out and I just installed it myself, which I could have done. But I didn't really want to pay that much. And I looked at what the other options were and discovered that you could install an ethernet cable to it and there were a couple things that needed to happen. So the first step was installing the ethernet and I'll take you through that first and then I will come back to let you know what I needed to do to get it actually working. So without further ado, here is the part of the video where we go through installing the ethernet cable. All right, so as you can see, we've already drilled the hole from the inside. I haven't really done anything as far as cable management or anything, but there's the router up there. And that goes to the outside. Got basically got a drill bit extender in order to be able to drill from the inside through the outside and through the outside siding. I'll show you that next. So we're outside now, and you can see there that this is where we came outside. Got a nice clean cut through the siding, thanks to my wife pushing on the other side. And then right now we have it run underneath the siding. Probably gonna need a little bit more cable outside, but don't worry about that once I get everything set up now that the sun is uh, not at its highest point of the day. It is a sunny day. So that way we can come over here and basically route that cable down there up to here. And with the lovely, uh, dog barking at us the whole time probably so let me get started okay so first thing i did and i did this a while ago did it about three four minutes ago is i pushed this button to the left or to the right i mean into its zero position so that it will um, be completely de-energized so now i can switch this to the off position and then disconnect the ac all the all the power is now off of it i can now feel safe in disconnecting or taking the cover off of each section of this so i have access to putting the cable in Take this this washer off. Then I'll have to push this out. Let me take you in for a close-up. So that is basically the whole look at it. And then right underneath there, sorry, it's in the way, but basically right there, right there is where the ethernet connector is. You can see there's where the 3G card is. I will take that out just to make sure there's no confusion as to what to use. And then it will get routed up just like that antenna cable is routed. It'll get routed right up through there and down through here. Now I do have to push out that rubber grommet 
um, need to get a some type of like sharpie or something to push it out so that we have a way of uh, routing the ethernet through that grommet so be right back okay did decide to take the radio out that was right here that's where the cellular radio would go so if I wanted to replace it with a 4G or 5G radio that's where it would go decided to leave the cable in there because it's probably gonna be the same one if I ever wanted to replace it um, so I will leave the cable in I did knock out the grommet which I will put back in once I get the cable routed so one moment and I will get that done okay here's the cable Sure I have enough. Oh, she left the tape on this to make sure it didn't get contaminated, which was a good idea. Okay. Sucker routed. Oh, come on, I know this should go through. Well, I'm gonna have to take that wire out of there. You know what? That's gonna have to get cut off. Put it all back together. back on in reverse order. Turn that on. Turn that on. Then turn that on. Okay. Let's see if it works. Okay, I don't know how well you can see that, but it does say Ethernet connected. But it's defaulting to cellular, so it is not actually doing anything. Like right here, it says, communication, cellular, not connected. Well, no kidding. I don't want it to be connected via cellular. How do I switch this? So I'm gonna have to do some research to figure out how to default this. 
Everything I read said that the the Ethernet would it would default to Ethernet if Ethernet was connected, and right now I'm not seeing that. Okay, now that the Ethernet cable is installed, uh, now the issue, as you can see at the end, was that, yeah, it didn't automatically change over to the Ethernet for the monitoring system. It kept saying that the cell, it was trying to look for the cellular modem, which it couldn't find because it wasn't installed. So that was the problem. So what I ended up having to do is I had to reinstall the 3G modem. So I reinstalled the 3G modem, got the monitoring system working, called up so well, first of all, I was working with the um, the actual company that installed my system. They actually had given me the instructions for installing the Ethernet in the first place, uh, although I pretty much knew how to do it anyway from some other videos. But I spoke to them and they're like, well, I'll see if we can get you a set up login, but I'm going to have to work through um, solar edge in order to get it done. Well, I decided this doesn't make any sense. Let's take the middleman out. Let's just call solar edge and see what I can get done. So I called solar edge, got somebody on the phone said, I have ethernet installed. I'm looking to get it changed over so that the default is ethernet right now. The default is, is the, the modem. And the person, all they heard was blah, 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 Ethernet and kept repeating herself more than three times, well, three times exactly, uh, saying, we're not going to help you install Ethernet. You need to get an installer to do that. And I kept telling her, it's already installed. It's already communicating. Look at the picture and the ticket that I provided and you can see it's installed. That's not the problem. And she would not relent. So finally, I said, you know what? Let me talk to a supervisor. So I got the supervisor on the phone. I said, here's the situation. You can see from the ticket, I have ethernet already installed. I know that I need to upgrade the software so that it will default, so that it will default to ethernet as well as change the default to ethernet. So it won't change back to 3G by accident in the interim. And he said, you seem to know what you're talking about. I'm gonna help you. So he probably wasn't supposed to, but he did. And spent a snowy night trying to get the, uh, for over an hour trying to get the actual inverter to update and actually even before we got to that point um he tried to do it over the air remotely but he couldn't do that so then he gave me access to the set app at, um the set app app from solar edge and so i actually had access to it was trying to update he was taking me through the process it kept faulting out at different stages of the update and then i finally said screw it I'm not going to try to do the update right away. I'm going to default out of it. And as soon as I did that, it auto updated at that point and it only took like 30 seconds. So it was like really, really fast. So anyway, so it finally auto updated and then just went in. I knew the instructions went in to the application and changed the, the, um, the actual default for the monitoring system to ethernet and everything's been great ever since. So, Thankfully, it was a long drawn out process, but for 25, less than $25 in hardware, I was able to upgrade my inverter to basically have the ability to do the monitoring system as, as opposed to paying, paying like 300 to $500 instead. So anyway, so hopefully this, this video will help those people out there in that situation. You have about two weeks left that today is March uh, 13th, uh, probably end up posting it on March 14th, but you have a, a little over two weeks before Sprint shuts off those modems. So ho again, hopefully this saves some people some money and I, I wish you luck. If you have any questions about the process and you're in this situation, please comment down below and I'll do my best to answer those questions as time allows. Alrighty, well again, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it and you guys all have a great day.